What's up guys, Garrett with self.dev. Today we're gonna go through LinkedIn's object-oriented programming assessment and see how we do. Uh, again, this is just for demonstrations, demonstrational purposes. I'm probably gonna pass this one, I assume, but uh, I, I might not. And uh, if I don't, this is just for educational purposes to let you guys see kind of what the questions are like and get a feel for the test. So let's get going. Uh, accessibility mode off, there's 15 questions, start. All right, cool. Which of these is the most accurate example of Liskov substitution principle? All right, so the chances of me failing this are going up drastically right now, because I don't know what Liskov substitution principle is, but if we Google that real quick, Liskov substitution principle. Uh, the principle defines that objects of a superclass shall be replaced with objects of its subclass. Okay, so it's like inheritance kind of. So if we have uh, public class car, public class void fly, um, public class Tesla car. I miss, I don't know if the syntax matters. I hope the syntax doesn't matter. Extends, that looks better. Public class Tesla extends car. I think this, I kind of want to go with that because car is, ex, or Tesla is extending car. Like cars, the, oh wait, how much time do we have? 40 seconds, all right, good. Um, okay, I like the ones with extends, but what's the difference between these two? Okay, public class car, public class flying car, extends car. Um, public, Tesla extends flying car. I feel like it's B. If that's not right, somebody give me the right answer in the comments below and I will give you a crisp thumbs up. All right, next. What is the purpose of a stat of static constructors? To delete the static members that are not required, to clear, to initialize the static members of a class, to initialize all members uh, with static values. I'm gonna go with to initialize the static members of a class because that feels like the correct answer here. So let's go with that. Actually, we got a minute. What is a static constructor? Uh, used to initialize any static data or perform particular action that needs to be performed only once. It's called automatically before the first instance is created or any static members are referenced. It says any, not all, so I'm pretty, I'm fairly confident to see. Again though, if that's not the right answer, let me know in the comments below and I appreciate you for that. Uh, what, ch which choice is a benefit of using dependency injection, code reusability, loose coupling, lazy initialization, data abstraction. Uh, dependency injection, uh, which choice is a benefit of using dependency injection? So if I, what is dependency injection? That's like where I'm importing something in my, at the top of the file in JavaScript, right? So I guess code reusability is a benefit of it, right? Because if it's a module I'm, import, I'm using multiple places, I can just like import that dependency in multiple, pla multiple files or like whatever I need to use in multiple files. Loose coupling, I don't know if it's, is it loose coupling? Cause like loose coupling, I feel like loose coupling isn't it. Lazy initialization, I don't think that's it at all. Uh, data abstraction, that also could possibly be it. Cause like the dependency that we would have in the file is abstracted into another, it abstracted into like the module we're importing. I feel like it's either A or D. We're gonna go with A just cause we have 10 seconds left and I gotta pick an answer. So A, boom. What is the scope of a class nested inside another class? The scope of a class nested inside the other class, um, it depends on the access specified by the enclosing class. I feel like that's it, just because it's different than all these other ones here. In Java, like if you have a class in JavaScript and then another class nested inside of it, the scope of that class is that class, unless you call like super to access something in the parent class, right? It depends. Everything in code depends. Code's black and white, and then it also depends a lot of the times too. In addition to responsibilities, what should be listed in class responsibility collaboration cards? What is that? What is a CRC? Class responsibility collaboration cards are brainstorming tools used to design an object oriented software. Responsibilities, collaborator. So is collaborator one of these? Um, nope. Which programming label? Uh, interact, let's read the answers. Interacting classes, the programmer responsible for implementation attributes which programming language is used. Uh, I don't think it's either of those. It's probably A or C. I'm imagining it's attributes, but let's check in here just to, what is this image? Um, class, responsibilities, collaborator. What class does, knows, or does? A collection of similar objects. So student number, class, responsibilities. Um, yeah, I guess responsibilities and at, I guess, because those are like the attributes, right? Well, I guess maybe not. Collaborators. How much time have I got? Nine seconds? Ah, um, I wish collaboration was up here because that'd be what I pick. We're gonna go with C. So, on to the next one. 
Objects are passed by reference. Reference, value, value or reference depending on the programming language used, or value or reference depending on program. I don't know enough about C or C Sharp or .NET or those languages to know if that is correct, but I feel like it's C, so we're gonna go with that. All right, number seven. Are you required to return an object if it was passed by reference to a function? And why or why not? Yes, the caller function needs to reflect the changes. Yes, the object must be the same in the caller function. No, changes in the automatic reflection, automatically reflected. Wait, no, changes will be automatically reflected in the calling function. No, you should use a global variable instead. So it's not D, that doesn't feel right. I feel like there's somebody out there laughing because that's the right answer, but I'm just ruling that out as number one. Um, so, changes will automatically reflect. The object must be the same. I feel like it's either A or C, because those are both talking about reflecting. Okay, in JavaScript, if you reference an object, you don't have to return that object because you're like referencing, like if you have X and Y both pointing to this same object in memory, you don't have to return that object. You just, I don't know if that makes sense. Say X equals an object, and then you say, y equals x, you're still talking about the same object. We're gonna go with a because we're out of time. Uh, in general, hiding the implementation complexity can do what? Obscurity through, obs wait, security through obscurity, right? Yeah, that's that's what you can do. Just kidding, that's a horrible practice. Um, don't rely on that to be secure. Um, in general, hiding the, the implementation complexity can do what? Provide more features, facilitate the programming experience, offer more features, complicate the programming experience. Hiding implementation complexity, I don't know enough about like exactly what hiding implementation complexity means to assume the correct answer for this. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna guess it's D, just because that feels. I feel like if you're, if you, it depends, right? Like if you need to know what's going on under the hood, like if you need to know that complexity stuff, that's gonna complicate the programming experience. If that implementate, if that complexity is encapsulated in some other file, and you don't need what's going on in there, like all you care about is what's in this file, then that's gonna make it easier. Uh, make it easier or make it harder? Okay, maybe make it easier, because we're gonna assume they mean like encapsulating stuff to that you don't care about, so you can just focus on what you need to. So, boom, that one. Uh, for, from the solid principles of object or OOP, uh, which statement best describes the uh, Liskov substitution principle? Oh wait, we learned about this a second ago. A class should have only a single responsibility, that is only changes to one part of the software's specification should be able to affect the specification of the class. Objects in a program should be replaceable with instances of their substituting type so of their subtypes without altering the correctness of the program. Software entities should be open for extension, but closed for modification. Many client specific interfaces are better than one general purpose interface. I feel like it's this one just because it's the longest and most of the time the longest answer on a test is the correct one. Also it's C and statistically C is the most, you like the correct answer most of the time. So that is what I'm basing my answer on here. Um, but then again, this one talks about subtypes and that when we Googled Liskov principle or uh, that it would talk about subtypes. So it could be that as well. I don't think it's A or B. Those are too short. I'm probably going to go with this. The class should only have one single responsibility that is only changes. Blah, 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 blah. Which statement best describes it? Okay. Objects in a program should be replaceable with instances of their subtypes without altering the correctness of the program. Eeny, meeny, miny, moe. Catch a tiger by the toe. If you hollers, let him go. My pick this one. All right. D. Super scientific method for picking the answer. What's the difference between a parameter and an argument? Parameters are what you use when you are creating the function, like X and Y, and then arguments are what you pass in when you're invoking the function. They are not the same. Um, so A is parameters and arguments are the same. That's, that's not it. A parameter is a value in the declaration of a function. An argument is the value that gets passed into the function basically. An argument is a value, an, argu an argument is the variable used for input values in a method. A parameter is a specific input passed. So that's the opposite of this, just worded differently. Interesting. Parameter is a variable in the declaration of a function. Yeah, it's this one. Uh, it's one of the, it's this one actually. Um, an argument can have many values while a parameter can only, that's not it. Yeah, I think it's B. The vocabulary of those is not very important to me. Like when I define a function, I know what I'm gonna, have when I'm defining the function. And then when I invoke the function, I know I'm going to pass in these things here. The word I use to describe that doesn't really matter. 
but I'm pretty sure it's B. So we're going to go with that. Uh, which statement best describes the gang of four design patterns called Memento and Observer? Memento captures and restores an object's internal state. Observer modify, notifies multiple classes of changes. Memento alters an object's behavior when its state changes. Observer encapsulates an algorithm inside a class. I don't think it's that. Memento notifies multiple ch classes of changes. Observer captures and restores an object's internal state. I'm pretty sure that's what Memento does. Memento defers to the exact steps of an algorithm to a subclass. Observer defines a new operation to a class without change. So I don't think it's this one. Uh, I think it's either A or C because these are basically the same thing, just reversed, right? Memento notifies multiple classes of changes. Observer notifies multiple classes of changes. So they're trying to basically like trick you. I hope, um, wait, or it's B and D all opposites as well. Encapsulates... No. Okay, so it's A or C. Pretty sure it's A because observer notify. Well, um, observer captures and restores an algorithm object's internal state. I don't feel like an observer would change anything, right? Notifies multiple classes of changes. I feel like Memento would be the one that captures and restores the state. So we're going to go with A. If that's not right, again, just let me know in the comments below because I like to learn stuff too. All right, next one. Um, what is a reference to an object? It is a shallow pointer that contains the address of an object in memory. It is the physical address of an object. It is the address where the variable and method of an object are stored. It is the address of variables only, not the methods of an object. Pretty sure it's like a pointer to where that object's stored in memory. And then that object would have the variables and methods inside of it, right? I don't know why you would point, it is a address that of the variables only. I don't know why a reference to an object would be the variables only for that object. Uh, what is a shallow pointer? This is a template class. Oh wait, how much time do I got left? 24 seconds, cool. Different, uh, deref, uh, oh my gosh. I don't know what that word is. Dereferences, is that it? Dereferences. All right, after reading that, I think it might be this, but we're gonna go with this because we got two seconds left. Um, how do objects, object behaviors and attributes differ? Uh, behavior, uh, behaviors describe dynamic properties. Attributes are static. Um, behaviors are vector quantities, attributes are scalars, attributes apply only to specific objects, behaviors apply to other linked objects, attributes describe the state, behaviors describe a change. That's the one I want to go with, but I don't feel like that's right. I feel like it's A. Behaviors describe dynamic properties, attributes are static. Attributes can change though, right? Like I can modify an attribute inside of an object or inside of a class with methods in that class. Yeah, I guess attributes are basically the state, right? What is a behavior in OP? Behaviors are the task that an object performs. Yeah, I feel like that describe a change. The task it performs would change stuff. Person attributes, for example. Okay, cool. Attributes type skate. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's D. So we're gonna go with that. Uh, 14 to 15. One more after this. How many levels? Uh, how many levels does multi-level inheritance allow in a program? Well, that's a good question. Let's ask our friend Google. How many levels does multi-level inheritance allow? Infinite. Is there is that an answer? As many levels of inheritance are required. I don't feel like there's a limit on that. I mean, it might be depending on what le what language you're in. Multi-level inheritance has three levels. Okay, is the three an answer? Doesn't look like three is an answer. It looks like only ten levels of inheritance. Only the amount of levels memory permits. Divided by processor speed, that could be it, possibly. Well, I guess depends, I don't know. Why would it be linked to processor speed? Because like when the, wherever the program's running, it might not have the same processor. If it's a web app or something like that. Uh, how many levels of inheritance are required within, wait, as many levels of inheritance as are required within 10 minutes. That does not sound right at all. Pretty sure it's D. Um, how many classes can be used in multi-level inheritance? This says two, this says three. Um, single level inheritance, duh, 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 duh. I don't see anything that's saying like exact number, number of levels in inheritance, 20 classes. Basically there are no restrictions. All right, that's enough for me. We're going with D. What is the best name for a function that corrects the, this assessment? Make result, calculate score, get answers, question score. I'm going to go with calculate score, but like you, that's, that's, I feel like that's kind of philosophical, right? Like you could debate which one's the correct answer here. There's not like an absolute, hey, this is the best one, like make result. You could make an argument for that. It'd be probably be a bad argument, like not a correct one, but you could make an argument for that. Get answers. 
that corrects this assessment. Because like corrects implies that it gets the answers. I don't know, I feel like this is a bad question. We're gonna go with B though, cause I'm pretty sure that's the right answer and then see what our results are here. Unfortunately, we didn't pass. Dang it, you scored higher than 67%. Ah oh, man, we were one question off. All right, well, I hope you guys learned some stuff. You know the right answers, know which ones I got wrong. Let me know in the comments down below cause I, I like to learn stuff like you do, hopefully. Um, if you have any feedback or any video suggestions, let me know in the comments below and I will be happy to try to make those videos as well. Make sure you give me a thumbs up if you learned something so YouTube knows I'm doing good stuff. Hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date on all the stuff I'm putting out. If you want to get my resume template, the one I used before I was a developer, um, when I was applying for my first dev job, didn't have any tech experience, look in the description. I'll have a way you can get that as well. And also, if you need to come hang out in our Discord or the self-taught-dev subreddit, links to both of those are in the description as well. It's r slash self-taught-dev, um, or just click on the Discord link below. And I think that's about it for this one. So I'll catch you guys later. Peace. Oh,